Hello everyone, my name is Travis and I'm with Zinsto. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up and configure Active Directory domain services on a server running Windows Server 2016. Uh, this is going to turn the server into a domain controller. In some of our other videos, you're going to need to have a domain controller and this will show you how to stage one for following along in those labs. I'm doing everything in VMware Workstation. However, you can use VirtualBox, Hyper-V, or any other virtualization software to accomplish this. I highly recommend using virtualization as it'll allow you to isolate your lab from your main network. You can also take snapshots of your server so you can easily roll back and uh, undo a lab if you need to. Um, I'm not gonna cover any of that right now, but look for a future video on the subject. So to get started, we're going to need to get the Windows Server 2016 installation media, and you can obtain this for free from Microsoft, and it's a free license for 180 days or six months. Uh, I placed a link in the video description below. Uh, so you'll need to select the ISO option and download the ISO and load that into your hypervisor. Uh, when you set up your server, I recommend at least two CPU cores, but if you can, four CPU cores, and at least two gigabytes of RAM and 60 gigabytes of hard disk space. Uh, installation's very easy, and it's just like a normal Windows install. Once that's done, it's time to set up your domain controller. So I've done a few things ahead of time, but I'm going to go ahead and show them to you. So you'll want to start up Server Manager. And this is the uh, utility that is used to configure uh, Windows servers. Um, you'll notice that Server 2016 looks a lot like Windows 10, so things can get a little confusing. Uh, just remember uh, that I, I highly recommend changing your desktop background, especially if you have the default Windows background, just so that way you know you're on a server. Um, so if you click on configure the server, I'm just going to point out a few things I did. Uh, first, I renamed this server to zinsto-dc01, meaning that this is a domain controller. And I've left it in the work group as we don't have a domain set up yet. Uh, just out of habit, I've enabled remote desktop and I've turned off IE enhanced security. Um, I'm also downloading some updates in the background, which I'll ignore because I'm going to have to reboot the server anyways as part of the setup process for Active Directory. So you're going to go up here to Manage and Add Roles and Features, and you'll do this once you do everything else because once you rename a server, you need to reboot it, and I recommend doing that first before you set up Active Directory. So once you do that, uh, go to Manage, Add and Remove Features or roles rather. And we're just going to fly right through this um, till we get to the server roles page. And here we're going to select Active Directory Domain Services and it's going to ask us to install these uh, prerequisites. And we're going to add features. Another thing that we're going to do is add DNS server. Um, it's going to complain that we don't have a static IP address that's fine, I'm doing this on purpose, so you can just hit uh, continue. And that's all we're gonna need, so we're gonna hit next. We don't need to install any features, and we're gonna skip over uh, Azure AD. And actually, okay, so this is just telling you about Azure AD, I'm sorry. We're gonna skip over that. Uh, and then this is going to tell us a little bit about our DNS server, skip over that, and confirmation. So here's everything that we're installing, and we'll click install. So now the server is going to begin installing Active Directory domain services and a DNS server, as well as um, group policy management and our remote, remote server administration tools. Um, so let's talk about a few of these things. Uh, first. So Active Directory Domain Services, this is what creates 
uh, the directory service and allows uh, computers and users to authenticate. Uh, the other thing is we need to have a DNS server. It can be on a separate server um, or it can actually reside on the domain controller. In this case, I'm putting everything onto a single box instead of splitting up the roles and that's just to conserve resources. Most environments also have their DNS server uh, on their Active Directory domain server as well. But the big thing here is Active Directory relies heavily on DNS. So if in your virtual lab environment you have, let's say, a Linux bind DNS server set up, you won't be able to use it as easily. Um, in fact, I wouldn't even recommend it. Uh, just stick with the Windows DNS server. Um, so anytime that you do set up uh, Active Directory, always make sure you click on DNS server because you're gonna you're gonna need it. It's integrated so heavily with Active Directory, it's just best to do it. Now this is going to take a while to install, so I'm gonna pause the video. And when I come back, we're going to actually configure Active Directory. All right, now that our server has Active Directory domain services installed, we need to promote this server to a domain controller. So you can actually just click this link right here within the wizard. And it's going to pop up the Active Directory domain services configuration wizard. So you'll notice that we have a few options here. We can add, the, add this domain controller uh, to an existing domain add a new domain to an existing forest or add a new forest. In this case, we're going to be adding a new forest and we're going to set our root domain name. So I'm going to set this to uh, zinsto.net and click next. And you'll notice that that red banner at the top there, that's just because of the uh, domain server. We don't actually have our domain server or DNS server set up yet. So you can ignore that. Um, so our forest functional level will be Windows Server 2016 and our domain functional level will also be Windows Server 2016. And we're just gonna leave the options domain name system DNS server and global catalog server checked. And now we need to set a directory services restore mode password. Uh, this password is something that you wanna keep and keep it safe because you'll need it if you ever have to restore uh, your uh, Active Directory environment. However, in most cases, you'll never really have to use this, but uh, on the safe side, make it something memorable and uh, secure that password. All right, and click Next. All right, that's fine. So we're gonna click next again. And now it's gonna uh, try and create a NetBIOS name off of the uh, domain name that we gave it. So in this case, it's gonna be Zinsto. We can also change it if we wanted to. Uh, just keep in mind that NetBIOS does have some limitations. Um, so usually just setting this to Zinsto or whatever you would like is fine. Uh, whatever it comes up with. Uh, you could just leave it as default and click Next. And now it's going to ask us where we want to store the database folder, our log files, and the sysvol folder. Uh, leaving these as default is perfectly fine and I would recommend it. So click Next. Uh, we can review our options and click Next. All right, so let's see here. Computer needs to be restarted. So I'm gonna go ahead and restart this server real quick, and then we're going to um, go ahead and redo our Active Directory domain services deployment. All right, now that the server has rebooted and come back up, I'm gonna go ahead and log in.
And once server manager comes back up, it's going to do a quick inventory of the computer or of the server. And then uh, we're going to see task uh, under here what we need to do. So there's the exclamation point. And we need to promote this server to a domain controller. So we're going to go ahead and click that again. So here we go, you can see that uh, we have something else to fix. Um, doo -doo -doo. So it's complaining that the local administrator password does not meet password requirements um, and that a password's not required. So it gives you what you need to do to fix this. So. That's just a safety verification because without that, it would be possible to set a uh, set no password on the admin account, which is very dangerous. So, uh, all right, so everything's passed. So now we just hit install. And now it's going to go ahead and complete the installation of Active Directory domain services and promote this server up to a domain controller. And again, this is going to take a few minutes, so I'm going to pause the video. And when we come back, everything will be all set. All right, so everything is all set. So it's going to force a reboot on us. So it tells us right here, computers being restarted because Active Directory domain services was installed or removed. So you can hit close and it's actually going to go ahead and do its thing. All right, so the server's back up. So let's go ahead and give a control alt delete here. And you'll see that the username will now have the NetBIOS name of your domain. In this case, mine's Zinsto and administrator. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in. And this is going to be our domain admin account. So once we get logged in, I'm going to show you how you can set up user accounts within Active Directory. So creating a new user account in Active Directory is actually pretty simple. So once we're logged in, we're gonna open up our start menu and go to Windows Administrative Tools, and we're gonna scroll down to Active Directory Users and Computers. Once this launches, you'll see on the side here, we have our domain, and you'll see some containers as well as an OU. So we're gonna right click, go to New, and Organizational Unit, and I'm gonna call this Domain Users. This is just a way to keep things organized because otherwise all of our user accounts live in the users container and you can't break it down as easily as you can with OUs. So once I do that, I like to right click on the domain users and create another organizational unit called domain admins. And in here, I'm gonna right click, go to new user and fill this out. Under full name, I'm going to type admin hyphen. And my username, I'm going to, I like to start admin accounts with a underscore. And then my username scheme. I'm going to uncheck user must change password. And I'm going to set this to password never expires just because this is a lab environment. In production, you never want to do that. You definitely want to make sure that passwords are rotated according to organization password policies, but this is a closed lab environment, so we can loosen up on security for a bit here. So we'll now add this user to the domain admin group. and that user is now a full admin. And now we are going to create a new standard user account. I 
I'm not going to prefix the username. I'm just going to leave it as is. I'm going to set a password. I'm going to clear this and also set password never expires. And that's it. That's how you create users within Active Directory. If we had other computers hooked up to our domain, uh, these users would be able to log into those computers. Now would be a great time if you're using a virtual environment to snapshot your domain controller. This way, if you do anything in some labs later on, you can always revert back to this state so you'll have a domain admin user as well as a standard user account and you won't have any computers that you may add to your domain. So uh, this is a perfect opportunity to snapshot and have everything set and working. So this way you can always come back to this point and not have to redo anything. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, random to any problems, leave them in the comment section down below. I read every single comment and I do my best to respond to them. Uh, if, you have, if you run into any problems, I'll also try and help you out in the comments as well. And don't forget to subscribe. Uh, subscribing is a great way to, to let us know that you really enjoy our videos. And at the same time, you can also stay on top of when we release new content to you. So thank you guys so much. Um, and I hope you guys learn a lot. And feel free to keep referencing this video for whenever you need to set up a new domain controller. And uh, have a great day.